I didn't I, I forgot about mom telling us about how you eat an elephant one bite at a time. I said, well, why would I want to eat an elephant? <laughs> 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 oh, really? I understood the same, but I didn't understand. And I always picture myself eating an elephant. Why would I want to eat an elephant? <laughs> That is true. She would always say that, that, you know, life sometimes isn't fair, but God is always fair. Amen. He's always loving. He knows exactly who you are, what you need, and where you need to get to. Amen. Oh. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Amen. 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 Don't, don't mind me here. I'm just uh, sharing our live broadcast right now so people can hear the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hold on. Give me just a second here. I had to restart it. Asking, can you share like the thing on your page? People that I don't even know. This is pretty cool. So I'm getting there. Here I am. I love technology. When you're in a hurry, it never goes fast. <laughs> but it's here. Bam! Posted. All right, we're good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Internet. All right, Lord, we just thank you and give you praise and honor and glory today. I thank you for uh, everything that you've said, done already. I know a lot of us have received from your presence. We just sent your peace, we sent your love, we sent your glory, Lord. And we thank you that we're not here for a show, but we're here for the glory. Yes. We're not here for a show, but we're here for the manifest presence of the Father. Hallelujah. That's why we're here, Lord. We're here because we need help. We're here because we love you. We're here because we want to serve you. And we're here because we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't care what people think about us. We just want to go full on, full out for your love, your power, and your presence. Yes. Amen, amen. Thank you. I pray that those kind of people are in this place today, Lord. Amen. I pray that you just continue to manifest to our hearts, continue to talk to us, to continue to give us wisdom, revelation, and knowledge in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you that ears are open today, eyes are open to see what you're saying and what you're uh, showing and what you're speaking today, Father God. Lord, I thank you that a mantle of miracles is in this place today, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, if you can believe, if you can believe, and then he says, all things are possible to them that believe. Amen. We've got to get a hold of this, guys. We've got to get a hold of everything that Jesus did on the cross for you, if you'll believe it. And you won't let the... Now listen, this is going to be... This is good right now. If you won't let the devil play the timing game with you. Amen. But you keep saying what you want. You keep speaking what is yours. You keep grabbing and holding on to what the Word of God says you can have and what you've already got, really. Amen. By faith. Thank you, God. Well, He'll just heal if He wants to heal. No! You're already healed. Yeah. You've got to grab that, speak that, say that, live that. And every time the devil says something, you just speak opposite of what he says and you speak what the Word of God says. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm getting right into this this morning. I'm Amen. excited this morning. I was, in my, I was just sitting, spending time with the Lord, and I kept hearing it, and I've been hearing this all night, and I've been hearing it all morning. Miracles, 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 miracles. Amen. Praise God. Miracles. Amen. How many of y'all know God does the miracles? Yes. We just received the miracle. Right. Yeah. Amen. What's a miracle? A miracle is something that changes, something that God's intervention comes in, does something, and reverses what looked drastic or, or, or death or whatever. He changes the whole thing around and observes His power into it and His power manifests. Yes. Yeah. And it causes a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. The kind of leukemia I had was supposed to stay in my body and, 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 and it, it was just, it was never, it'll never leave it. The, the reports of that kind of leukemia, it's proven that it never, you can suppress it, but it never leaves your body by medical science, is what it, is what it says. And that could be the truth. I guess it's the truth. But it's not the truth for me. Because it's not in my body anymore. It left in the middle of 
2008. Amen. It hasn't come back and will never come back because the Bible says that that affliction will not come back in second time. So every time the devil says something's going to happen, I say, wait a minute, Mr. Devil, you moron. You forgot to read what God said. That affliction will not come back the second time. Evil will not come back upon me. Amen. And then he goes on to talk about how God has destroyed that. Well, how do you know that? The Bible says so. Well, so what? I mean, well, then you got to believe it. Yeah. If you can believe. See, Jesus knew there will be people that won't believe. Did you know that he could heal a few folks with a couple headaches, Harold, in his own hometown that day? Because of their unbelief. He couldn't do anything. Because people didn't believe. See, that's the thing. Let me, let me say this. This, this, is good. this is a good message today, I promise you. You're going to get a lot out of this. I hope you're going to be blessed. You're going to go out of here going, yes! I hope. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But listen. <laughs> Jesus went into that place, the Son of God, in His own hometown. He was ready to be used by the Lord. Just like I'm here today to be ready to be used by the Lord. A lot of people get their eyes too much on the preacher. Get your eyes off me. Don't even look at me if you don't want to. If you sit there with your eyes closed the whole service, it ain't going to bother me at all. As long as you're awake. Amen. Some of those do fall asleep. I just let them sleep. I understand. But it's not about what I say. I'll share the truth. I'll say what the Bible says. If I ever get off track from the Bible, I promise you, He will tell me. Yeah. I want him to. There's been times where I've missaid things, and he'll call me on the phone and say, "Look, I just want you to know you missaid this. You need to correct that." That's fine. But I will share the truth. But see, a lot of people get their eyes on doctrines of demons, doctrines of devils. They get their eyes on man's doctrine, and they just make a case in their mind. Well, Grandma said it, and that's just it. Or this certain preacher said it, and that's just it. Fooey, guys. we got to get the Word and see what the Word says about that situation. The Word says about healing, if you'll just believe and receive and get right before the Lord and get your heart right before God, you can receive total miracle working power and healing in your body if you want it. Amen. Jesus paid the price for it already. Yeah. I can't speak for why somebody dies young. I can't speak why somebody dies with sickness that's a born again believer and loves Jesus and you know it. I can't speak that. I'm not God. You don't know what I don't know what was going on with him. A lot of folks, I'll just be honest with you, I know this because I've had them tell me, they just say they'd rather just go on home. And God will let them. Yeah, that's true. So we can't put every situation in the same basket and that's it. Even my situation might have leukemia, okay? Now, my decision was I know that I, I, I'm not going to live with leukemia. I'm not going to die of leukemia before God fulfills the plan of my life. Yeah. Amen. That was my first reaction. Was fear knocking on the door? Absolutely. But I've been raised around people, and I've seen people over my whole lifetime get healed, have miracles. Things happen, cancers fall, people, people get healed, people get born again, all kinds of stuff. I've seen the supernatural power of God my whole life, and I chose that day. I am not going to die and leave this earth early before I fulfill the plan of God. Amen. Jesus took leukemia on his body that I wouldn't have to live with it. And the Bible says if I will follow him, and I will believe, and I will live with an open heart before him, not in perfection, but with an open heart before him, and start to search my own heart and find out if there's a door open where the enemy was able to come in and zap me, then I need to know what's going on, God. Yes. And that's what I decided to do. And the awesome thing is, is God started revealing some things to me about my life. And what's more awesome about God is He started showing me about a year before I even knew I was sick about some things that I needed to deal with. He was already preparing me. You mean God allowed sickness to come on you? I'll say it this way. He will. He didn't give me sickness. The devil attacked. Yes, yes. Right. 
And even when we're going through something that, that you look at God and go, because I mean, there was even time I looked at God, I'm like, seriously, Lord, what the heck? I can count on one hand how many times I've been sick my whole life. But leukemia, wow. And I wasn't blaming God. But immediately I started searching out where am I at? What's going on with me? And mom stood up here and talked about contention, bitterness, anger, all this kind of stuff. That's one of the fastest things that will open the door to the devil for sickness to come into your life. That's one of the biggest things. It really is. And so, you know, God sent his son for a reason. Not only to save the world or the ones that will come to him and give their life to him, but he also destroyed death, hell, and the grave. He bore upon him, the Bible says, sickness, disease, pain, grief. He bore everything that we face in this life. <laughs> That we face in this life, even though we live here, it's a natural world. We have feelings, we have emotions, we have pain, we have things happen. But Jesus took all that upon him that we, so we could go to him and say, help God. And you know what is so awesome is God will always respond by talking to you and showing you where you're at. Amen. Amen. See, look, there are certain things I used to kind of thought I was getting away with because I was a baby Christian before, and now I can. That's right. That's true. And I know it. And I know it. I know it inside. So, like, when I get ticked off and, and get mad at somebody or say something or react or whatever, now it's immediately that I know I need to repent and, 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 and let go of that. Immediately. Before, I was like, I'm going to hold on to this for about two years. <laughs> and I'm just going to keep that person at a distance. If they even cross the line, I'm just going to, you know. Gosh, that's a garbage attitude. Yeah. Bad attitude. Yeah. It'll hurt you. It hurts you. Yeah. And it hurts others. Yeah. But now, just that one little thing in my mind. Now, I know. I can't, I can't, I can't harbor that. I can't. Hold on to that. I can't let it allow it to eat me alive. I can't. I gotta get rid of it now. I gotta repent. I gotta ask for forgiving. I gotta change my heart attitude. Yeah. Can't deal with that anymore. That's just me personally. I don't know about you, that sense of you, the Lord, but just me, I can't. So there's certain things we know that as we grow with the Lord, we can't hold on to, we can't get away with. God holds us to things, guys. He loves us, but he's like, come on, Mike, seriously? Come on, I'm working with you still. Come on, just give it up. You know? Because he loves us. A father that corrects you loves you. Right. Glad my father corrected me. He taught me how to grow up and be a man. He taught me how to grow up to be a man of God. He taught me how to grow up and live according to the laws of this land and do what I needed to do and do things right. And I'm thankful for that. And when I got out of line, he whipped my butt mm -hmm. with a belt. Fake cried just so. But with mom, it's like I'm running down the hallway trying to lock myself in the room. She's kicking the door in. Coming in with a big old spoon, you know. Get over, you know. Mom wouldn't even say it. She would just, she would just go off. There you go. She got more angry than me. Yeah. I did. Dad's like, now you know why? You know, I, I don't want to do this, but I got to do this. You gotta learn that if you don't obey the rules, you're gonna suffer pain in life. And you gotta, you gotta learn that you gotta abide by the rules. So bend over, like that. Bend over. Mom's like, wow! She didn't explain. She didn't say nothing. She just went at it. Man. I'm still scared of her. I'm just being honest. She might not be able to catch me now, but I won't. I won't get too close. You know. Thank you, Captain. But it's gonna watch my back. Yeah, it's, uh, <coughs> it's a good thing though when the father will correct us because he loves us. Right. Yeah. He wants to take care of us. Amen. And so, you know, this morning 
And like I said last night, I just kept hearing the word miracles, miracles. And I just, I, I'm just going along with what I feel like the Lord shared with me. So turn over to, uh, let's look at, um, well, there's, I mean, there's just so many. Let's, let's go to Acts chapter 4. <laughs> Acts chapter 4. I just want to read a few scriptures here. I'm going to read out the Amplified Bible. Acts chapter 4, look at verse 30. Acts 4, verse 30. I'm getting there. It says, <clears throat> Come on. It says, While you extended your hand to heal in signs and wonders, attesting miracles take place through the name and the authority and power of your holy, holy servant and son, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were meeting together was shaken, a sign of God's presence. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness and courage. Verse 32, talking about the apostles. Now the, the company of believers was of, the, of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was exclusively his own, but everything was common property and for the use of all. And with great ability and power, the apostles were continuously testifying to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace, God's remarkable loving kindness and favor and goodwill rested richly upon them all. See, God will, God is a God of miracles. God used the apostles to go out and to do miracles, signs, and wonders. Jesus says in John chapter 4 that if you'll just believe the, what I've done, the works that I've done, if you'll believe them, you'll also do the works that I've done, and even some will be greater than mine. Now see, Jesus... It's awesome. This, 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 the scripture hasn't changed there where it says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. That scripture hasn't changed. It's still the same today. Go ye. God said go. And it also says that when you go and you preach the gospel, when you preach the kingdom, when you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you do that, that everything that Jesus did, everything that Jesus accomplished for us here on earth, all the gifts, the equippings, the talents, the gifts, the glory, the love, the compassion, the goodness, all that He carried on Him, He says that you can have them if you'll just believe that you have them. So as we're going ye, as we're going into the world, as we're going into our jobs, as we're going into the city, the marketplace, the town, whatever, as we're going into these situations, if we'll believe that what Jesus did and had on Him, if we'll just believe that, He'll use our mouth, He'll use our hands, He'll use us to bring miracles, signs, and wonders into people's lives, guys. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I was already born again when I got healed of leukemia. But when I got healed of leukemia, that just made, I just felt more refreshed. I felt excited. I was glad that I wasn't dying of cancer. I was glad that I was healed. I was glad that I don't have to mess with that disease anymore. I was glad it was gone. Amen. Yeah. I mean, have you ever experienced being healed of something before? How exciting is that? How refreshing is that? How glorious is that? Praise God. Amen. And if you ever have, let me put a little word of encouragement to you. Don't stop praising God for what He did for your life. Always thank Him for it. Amen. And praise Him for it. And He's a loving Father. Amen. And He heals you of your disease and your sickness. Yeah. Remember what happened to David's wife? King David's wife? Mm -hmm. yeah. David came in with the ark. Brought the ark, ark back. Praise God. Came back in. He was dancing in the street. He was dancing in his underwear. Praise God. And his wife mocked him. And said, oh, what kind of king are you? Out dancing in your underwear. You look like a fool. You look like an idiot. You're dumb. You're immature. Blah, blah, all this kind of stuff, she said. And then the Bible says, because of her attitude and her mockery, she dried up. That's scary. That's dangerous. Dangerous to mock God. It's dangerous to mock God's people. I don't care if you disagree or agree with them. Don't mock people. There you go. That's a good word. Yes. Very good word. They mocked the prophet, those kids, and what happened? Bear came out of the woods and ate them. 
See, a lot of people, oh, that's just, oh, that's not really God. <laughs> Some of our lips are becoming a little loose towards preachers. All I'm saying is, because you better be careful and be quiet about that. Because that's one of the things God dealt with me about several years back. <laughs> or about Christians, period. They might not agree with the way you believe. Whatever. Love them anyways. Come on, Pastor. It's not about tit for tat and all this junk. Just love people. Yeah. You love people, shoot you. God will use you for great things. Yeah. And, so, and you know what's even more awesome is sometimes you'll learn some things from some of those people that you thought you knew, but you didn't know jack squat about. Yeah. And they'll teach you something. It's happened to me before. Yeah. I'm just being honest. I, I, mean, I, so t I love you guys, man. This is great. <laughs> But see, you have miracle working power. Yes, the Bible talks about compassion, and the Bible talks about virtue. Mm -hmm. And if you notice it, when Jesus, when he was called upon, or when he was <clears> out <throat> in, in about walking through the city or whatever, walking through crowds of people, if you if you if, if you'll notice now, I can't say exactly how many times this is. I'd have to read it. I've heard it before, but I can't recall what it was. But if you read the accounts of Jesus and the healings that took place in his life while he was just here on earth for the, in his ministry there, most of the healings came by people's faith, not him getting it for them. Most of the healings, like I said, I can't remember how many it was. But most of the healings came by people saying, I believe, Jesus. I know I'm healed. I believe. I have faith. I came to you in faith, Jesus, that you can heal me. And you would always hear Jesus say, so be it. Or by your, according to your faith. Here it is. The woman with the issue of blood is a huge story. We, all, we know that story, most of us. She, went to, she bled for 12 years, went to physicians, doctors, spent all her money, the Bible says. Continual flow of blood. You know, she shouldn't even have been out in public. That's how their laws were. She, she should have been at home. She could have been stoned to death for being out in public, right. for, for, for bleeding like that in public. Mm -hmm. But she knew if she could just get to Jesus, yeah. her faith was in Jesus. That was her only hope. Yeah. Guys, my only hope when I had leukemia was the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. My doctor's awesome. I still love him. I'll see him in June for my yearly checkup or whatever that I go down there to. I love the guy. He's a great doctor. He knows his stuff. He's super smart. Just a great guy. But I, I knew he would help me on his end naturally. But I knew ultimately the blood of Jesus Christ made the Christ man. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 Nothing wrong taking medicine. Nothing wrong with you know, having a doctor, none of all that stuff. Go, you need to. That'd be stupid if you didn't. Amen. That's right. But ultimately, if you're a believer in Jesus yeah, Christ, yeah. he's the great physician. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Come on. His blood. Thank you, Jesus. Cast out devils, cast out disease. Right. Pulls the cripple, makes him makes him whole again. Hope you all are getting ready to start seeing some of these miracle sign yeah. wonders and manifestations yeah. right in front of your eyes. Because yeah. that's the threshold we're at right now. We're going to step into some of this stuff. We're just going to even blow yes. my mind, and I'm a believer in it. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm serious. Lord. Yes. Lord. It's coming. Yes. Amen. That's why I'm here at Miracles Miracles. I believe God's going to do some miracles today. I think that's why the Lord's wanting me to share what I'm sharing with today, because some of you need a miracle in your life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And he's wanting you to open your heart and expect God to provide and do what he needs to do in your life. Amen. And like I said before, stop letting the devil play the time game with you. Yes. It's not up to him Amen. how long it takes. Yes. Right. Can I just be honest with you? It's none of his business. That's right. That's right. Right. What's going on between you and the Lord? That's right. That's right. Yes. He's not your father, unless you're serving him, but hopefully no one in here is serving the devil. If you are, I'll cast the devil out of you before you leave it today if you want it. Because he's not a father. He's a father of lies. But, Jesus is, he's already established his word on the earth. And you know what? The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He never changes. His word hasn't changed. 
He hasn't, re he hasn't pulled back on anything. He hasn't said, well, maybe this will work now. I've been gone now a little over 2,000 years. So, yeah, there's probably a little bit of power left on that word. No. It lasts forever. Amen. There's so much to God that there's not enough paper, the Bible says. Not enough pens to even write out how much God is and how awesome he is. Amen. Man, I love the Lord. I'm so thankful for him. Praise yeah. God. So look at Acts chapter 5. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Lord, we receive the Lord. <laughs> thank you that you're working in people's bodies right now that are sick, or have disease, that are hurting and pain. I thank you that you're working right now to release healing in Jesus' name. Yes. Work in this place right now, Father, as I minister your word. Lord, we receive healing. In our minds, our bodies. I thank you for it, Lord. Your word's true, Lord. I receive right now from heaven in the name of Jesus. Acts 5, verse 12. At the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders, attesting miracles, were continually taking place among the people. And by common uh, consent, they all met together at the temple in the covered porch called Solomon's uh, Porch. But you notice here it says, but, verse 13, but none of the rest of the people, the non-believers, dared to associate with them. However, the people were holding them in high esteem and were speaking highly of them. More and more believers in the Lord, crowds of men and women, were constantly being added to their number. To the, such an extent that they, can, that they even carried their sick out into the streets and put them on cots and sleeping pads, so that when Peter came, by at least this shadow might fall on one of them with healing power. Wow. Come on. Thank you, Lord. That shadow of Peter. What was that? It was the light of God on Peter, the anointing yeah. of God on Peter. It was a brilliant light that would come on people. It was on Peter. Why? He was stirred up in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Listen, these people, you, you think about the 120 that were in the upper room there in Acts chapter 1 and 2. You think about that for a second. I talked about this here a couple weeks ago, I think it was. They never even knew, they didn't even know what the Holy Spirit was. All they knew is Jesus told them that there was going to be, I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. He's going to be a comforter. He's going to be your counselor. I'm going to leave them here with you. I won't leave you orphans, Jesus said. And then Jesus ascended into heaven, 120 went and got up in that upper room, and they waited in expectation. They prayed for this thing that Jesus said was going to come. Yeah. How much faith did they have? They didn't even know what he was talking about. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Have you ever seen God? I never have. Some of you might have. I've never seen Jesus before that I know of. So you might have had a vision of him, and I believe in that. I, I never have. But I know he's real, and I know he loves me, because I've watched him work in my life, things that nobody else can do, he's done. And when it comes and blesses you, folks, let me give you a hand, it's not the devil. <laughs> when you have joy, it's not the devil. When you get drunk in the Holy Ghost, it's not the devil. Well, that's of the devil. Yeah, the devil wants me to be happy. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! Right. Speaking in tongues is of the devil. I've never read that before in my life. Show me the scripture and maybe I'll believe it, but I doubt it. Why would the devil want to speak in tongues and give glory to God? I just I don't understand. The Bible talks about speaking mysteries unto God. It talks about edifying your it talks about edification. It talks about building up yourself in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? It just doesn't make any sense. Right. I'm opening up a can of worms. I know. Don't throw rocks at me. It'll just bounce off the angels that are standing around me. So, hallelujah. <laughs> I just don't have time for nonsense. Yeah. I want to I want to lay hands and watch arms grow out. Yeah. I want to watch devils come out. Yeah. I want to watch people get healed. Yeah. I want to watch cancers fall into people's faces. Yeah. I want to see people get 
got a wheelchair. Yes. I want people yes. to live a deaf all their life here. Yes. I want to see blind people's yes. eyes open. Yes. I want to see uh, deformities straighten out and be yes. totally healed. That's why I have no time for the enemy. That's why I have no time for lies. That's why I have no time for fear. That's why I have no time but to worship the Lord, stay humble before Him, do my best to follow Him in every area of my life, and when I make a mistake, repent and just keep on trusting. Right. Right. Yes. That's all I know to do. That's all I want to do. Yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that awesome, Sabrina? Amen. Awesome. <laughs> man, I just, man, there's just something about you today. Every time I look at you, I just see the Lord. Hallelujah. Just the healing power of just in your life, that gift of honor. Hallelujah. Amen. It's coming to a higher level, praise Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. You're looking for, you're looking for people, man. Just healing virtue. <coughs> Compassion equals virtue. That word virtue in the Greek is, I believe it's arita. I believe that's how they say it. A, A R E T A, arita. It means the manifestation of God's miracle working power. Whenever you read the word virtue, there's power there, there's miracles there, there's healings there. There's God, His presence, His manifestation of who He is, is in that. Did you notice that when Jesus would go, He would go about the city and He would go in love? Now you think about the 12 guys that are hooked up with Jesus, the disciples. Those guys had major issues, all of them. Just like me. Just like you. Yeah. Have issues. Yeah. Things you're still working on. Things you're still laying on the operating table before the Lord. And saying, here it is, God, cut it out. I don't want it in my life anymore. They weren't perfect. They had problems. They went through circumstances. They went through valleys. They went through storms. But on the other hand, they went through victories. They got power from the Most High. They learned from Jesus. They understood what He was saying. They loved Him. They learned how to. Here's the hugest thing ever if you're going to really follow Christ. They learned how to love people for who they are. One thing I've learned from Dad over all these years, and, I, and there's a lot, there's a long time I didn't understand it, and it would frustrate me. But one of the things I've learned from him over all these years is to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Yeah. Maybe they didn't have the dad you had. Maybe they didn't have the mom you had. Maybe they didn't have the grandparents that you had. Maybe they didn't have this in their life or that in their life. Maybe they didn't have that, and that's why maybe where they're where they're at right now, and they, they can't quite see what's going on. They're being deceived just like I was or just like you were at some point in your life. But to start looking at, to people with compassion. And how can I be a help to them if they would like me to? Yes. How can I love them if, they would, if, if they'll allow me to love them? Even though you want to love them no matter what, you love them anyways, even if they don't. Yeah. Listen, folks. Now, this is, okay, this just came up to me, and I'm going to say it. Listen, some of you right now, you're going to find people here in the next real soon future, real soon coming up, you're going to find people start to leave your life. People that you thought would never would. Yeah. Yes. Friends, acquaintances. Yeah. Don't get... Angry at it. Don't let bitterness come in. When that starts happening, just let them go. Yeah. Amen. Now listen, I'm not talking about marriages and all that. That's not even what I'm talking about. I'm talking about friends, spheres of influence, people that you've been around. Yeah. You're gonna, people are going to start kind of distancing themselves. Especially when you're going full hog for God. You're going to find people that will start to distance themselves. From you. Right. Don't be deceived by the enemy in that. Sometimes you just got to let it go. And just keep going and doing what God's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? See, Jesus went about with compassion. The Bible says he went about with compassion and healed them. He saw the sheep that were hurting. He saw the people that were hurting. They were like lost lambs. They were hurting. They were scattered. He would go and he would heal them. And he would, he would talk to them. He would preach them. And did you know that Jesus even left the 99 just to get to the one person? Yeah. 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 God might put one person in your life for two years. 
that you can just minister and minister and minister and minister. You minister. Yes. Cultivate. Amen. Love on. Amen. Help Amen. grow. Give them the word. Plant the seeds. Water the seeds by praying. Just, you know, yes. God will do that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So compassion, when compassion goes out, virtue comes in. When compassion goes out for people, the miracle power of God comes in. The power of God will come in when you release compassion. Let me say this. You might release compassion to somebody on the street, and they might even reject it and say, I don't need God, I don't need this, you're a nut job, whatever, take a hike, you know. But that compassion still released virtue. Yeah. Because the love of God cannot be cut off. Amen. That's a good word. Amen. So no matter what, even if they rejected it in the natural, in front of your face, you no, know, forget it, that compassion, that love still came forth out of you. And sometimes, <laughs> I know this, some of you, and you know, some of you know this too, that when you, when they reject it, most of the time it's because it's hit them right between the eyeballs. Yes. Yeah. And they know that you're right. Yeah. yeah. And that Jesus is true. And that love is real. Yeah. And they run from it. That was like me coming home, man. You know, I knew I was out being a moron and being goofy and knucklehead when I was growing up. I'd walk into the room and I knew Dad would be chilling in the living room. And I wouldn't go in, hey, what's up, Dad? Hey, how Dad? I'd go right in the room, go right down the hallway, right to my bed. <laughs> because I knew I was wrong. And when I got around truth, truth was going to see it. Yeah. Isn't that good how God will do that? You feel? It's good to feel conviction. It's good to feel that. It's good to feel that when you know, oh, gosh, I blew it. I shouldn't have did that. That's a good thing to feel that way. Because your heart's right before the Lord. And you know that, you, God, forgive me. I shouldn't have done it, Lord. Forgive me. Thank you, Lord. I make things right before you. Hallelujah. And it does. It works. He's forgiven us. But conviction's a good thing. It is. I've heard Stephen Powell talk about this a lot lately. We had lunch a few weeks ago, and he was talking about how the Lord's been talking about the fear of the Lord coming back in the church. Yeah. Yes. Fear of the Lord coming back into the church. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? Well, that can mean all kinds of things, really. But I, when I hear that, what I think of is, first first of all, personally, the per people personally, getting right before the Lord as an individual. Yeah. But then also, a reverence that's going to be coming back yeah. in. Yeah. See, and a lot of time, here's the deal. We have our ideas about how things should be and how the order should be and all this kind of stuff. Really, that's all a bunch of hogwash because it's the Holy Spirit that should create the order. Yeah. And when the Holy Spirit comes in, we should respond the way the Holy Spirit wants us to respond. Sometimes He comes in with a shout. Sometimes He comes in with laying on our face before Him in total silence. Sometimes He comes in with a, with a spirit of prayer on Him. And he wants us to hook up and pray. If the Holy Spirit came in here right now with the spirit of prayer, I would stop what I was preaching and we would shift over and get right into that because that's the order of how He wants to do things. And He knows what He's doing. I don't. He does. That's why we got to give ourselves fully over to the Holy Ghost. I say, come on, Holy Ghost, come on. Use us, use me. Praise God. So, when compassion goes out, virtue comes on the scene. Hallelujah. It says, you don't have to turn there, but in 2 Peter chapter 1, 3 through, 3, uh, 3 through 5, it talks about adding faith. Adding faith to the virtue. Letting that virtue, letting that compassion come out. Actually, you know what? Let's just turn there. I want to see that, actually. First Peter. Excuse me, Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter 2. Excuse me, chapter 1, I'm sorry. Second Peter, chapter 1. Look at verse 3. It says, for his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. 
For by these, verse 4, for by these he has bestowed on us his precious and magnificent promises of inexpressible value, so that by them you may escape from the immoral uh, freedom that is in the world because of uh, dis, uh, uh, disruptible desire and become sharers of the divine nature. Now listen to verse uh, 5. For this very reason, applying your diligence to the divine promises, make every effort in exercising your faith to develop moral excellence and in moral excellence knowledge Insight and understanding. Yeah. Understanding what the will of the Lord is for your life. Understanding who you are in Christ. Understanding what, what sin will do and what hum, um, humility will do. Understanding what favor is. Understanding what mercy is. Understanding what grace is. Understanding who God is and how He loves us. He wants us to build our lives on His virtue, on His love, on His patience, on the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5. He wants us to look to the things that are uh, uh, of good report. The Bible says to look up and look at the things that are of good report and praise and worship Him for the things that He's done. Too often we get our eyes on what the devil's saying. He'll beat, 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 beat. The devil shows no mercy. He's relentless. He hates you. And he wants you to be miserable for the rest of your life. He knows he doesn't have you. He knows you're heaven bound. You're born again, child of God. You give your life. He knows that. But he, he wants to make you miserable. He wants to accuse, 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 accuse. But Jesus took care of that guy already. Yeah. Right. He hung on the cross and said, no more, devil. This, this, it is finished. This is once and for all. It's over with. I'm giving my life for people because I love them. Mm -hmm. And he did. Yeah. He did. It says, <clears throat> in Ephesians, don't turn to Ephesians 5, verse 1. It says, be imitators of God. Who is God? God is full of love. If you can imitate one thing of God, imitate his love. Imitate his love. You want to start seeing uh, uh, signs and wonders and miracles and, and souls and harvest and salvation come through your life? Start loving people. You'll see God manifest. And whatever they need, they'll, 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 they'll come to it. Amen. God will deliver them. Amen. Through you. That's what's awesome. Amen. Now, I know there's some, some stories we've heard, and I believe these two were. Jesus will appear in people's rooms just to scare the hell out of them. So they'll get saved. That can happen. The Bible says some are saved by fear. But, uh, and that's good. As long as they get saved, that's, that's great. As long as they come to Jesus, that's all I care about. How it happens, whatever, as long as they do. I mean, there's people that have denied God their whole life. I've heard stories that have denied God their whole life. And hours before they went on from this earth, they conceded and realized. Yeah, that's true. He's been real this whole time. Father, I give you my life. Amen. Right, yeah. I know of a personal story of a man, man that goes to our church, his father, for years would say, oh, I don't need God, I'm going to hell, we're gonna, I'm going to drink beer with all my buddies, we're going to hang out at the bar. <laughs> two days before, or a day or two before he died, he called another man here in the church, my grandfather. And he went and saw him. And he gave his life to Jesus. Yeah. He's in heaven. He could see me and realize, I've been running my mouth all these years, and I was wrong. And you know what? He mocked God. He mocked heaven. He rejoiced about hell. He thought it was cool. He thought it was awesome. Yeah, my buddies were going to drink some suds. Yeah, and hang out, you know, in the hot tub and all this stuff. Hot tub, did you catch that? <laughs> But deep down, he knew. You know why? Because he'd heard people talk about Jesus. He'd heard his son witness to him about Jesus. He'd heard other people through his lifetime, maybe his mom, maybe his grandma, maybe someone at a local church he went to as a child, heard about Jesus, and he knew he was real. 
Some people wait till the very end. Yeah, last breath. But thank God they do. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank God. I'm thankful for that. I think some of us are going to be shocked when we see when we get into the place. Some of you are probably going to be shocked when you see me walk into the place. You know? <laughs> <laughs> really didn't make it! You were serious! God. We just can't, we can't in our human brains comprehend how much love God has for you. Right. Right. And you know what? God does not throw anybody to hell. They hurt themselves. He's always a loving father. He loves the people that are there. I'm thankful for Jesus. I really truly am. Matthew 9, 36 says, Jesus was moved with compassion. God's compassion, guys, does not fail. Yeah. And I'll just be honest with you. I'm learning this right now as we speak. That God's compassion, if we'll walk in His compassion, we'll walk in His love, and you know really inside if you are or not. Yeah. If you will, it will bring His manifestation of His glory in your life, but also on the lives that God has led you to. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I should be receiving from the glory that's on your life. You should be receiving from the glory that's on my life. We're sharpening each other. We're growing with each other. Praise God. And then when we leave this place, we're able to go out and the ones that are on absolute empty, they're getting ready to run out of gas. We're able to, because of our compassion for them and how Jesus sees them, we're able to deliver into their life what they need. Yeah. Yeah. So they'll make it. Yeah. There was someone praying for you that you would make it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. Yes. You're here. Yes. Yeah. Someone's Amen. praying for you. Amen. Thank you. God's love is shown Amen. mercy right now in this place. Amen. Praise Amen. 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 So what am I saying today? This is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm gonna I'm wrapping it up here. We're gonna take communion in just a few minutes here, though. What I'm saying here today is this: is I've said a lot, of a lot of stuff I didn't even know I was going to say today, to be honest with you. But I kept hearing the word miracles, like I said. And I really believe there's people in here that need some miracles in their life. Today. And, and I mean, either physically, or maybe certain situations that you need God's hand to move upon, like now. And I believe this, and plus the word of the Lord says this, if you'll expect that and you'll hook up with that, and I'm going to pray here in a minute for that. And if you'll hook up with that, and you believe that, God's hand will work in that situation. Amen. Don't let the time game mess with you. Right. You believe it, you receive it, and that settles it. Yeah. And then you keep speaking and thanking the Lord for it. You thank Him for it. When the devil says, that's not, that, shut up! Right. This is what the Lord has said to me. And then you speak, what the Lord has said. Mm -hmm. I had eight warts on my hand. I had like four on one, four on the other, something like that about two years ago. Out of nowhere, all of a sudden I started getting these little warts. What in the world? I lived with them for about three or four months. And I heard Norval Hayes preach a message on cursing anything that isn't of God. Yeah, man. And believe me, and even though I knew that, I've been taught that my whole life, it was like, in my bathroom, as I'm listening to this, while I'm getting ready, I'm like, well, duh, why haven't I been doing this? Okay. In Jesus' name, I curse you, fungus. Get off my hands. You didn't come from heaven. Yeah. You're annoying me. Yeah. And you're ugly. Get off. Yeah. For two weeks, every time I thought about it, every time I think about it, every time I feel it, I curse you, dry up, and get off my hands. Yeah. Yeah. You can ask my mom. You can ask my wife. You can ask my kids. Some of you that even showed. One by one, those things started disappearing. Within two weeks, they were all gone. They never come back. Amen. I got one right here that's going to dry up and leave, too. Amen. There was one I had here, the same thing. Dry up and left. It was there almost a year. Dry up and left. Don't let the devil play the time game with you. You keep speaking the word over whatever it is that you want. Amen. And you'll have it. Well, if it's God's will, it is God's will. Yeah. To heal. Yeah. To help. Yeah. To answer. 
and provide the need that you have. It is His will. Yes. Yes. It's guaranteed. Because He loves us. Amen. Hallelujah. Shaka bama bam bam. Amen. 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 That's my friend Todd Bentley to say. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, if you need a miracle, stand up. Right where you're at. There's something in your life that you've been just coming to the Lord with, and you know there's something there that you need. Now, I don't have the right words to say it. I don't even have the full power. The Lord has it. But the power is in your believing. <laughs> it's in your faith. That's where it's at. So I'm just going to pray. And right now, whatever it is, I want you to pray, and I want you to come before the Lord, and I want you to expect whatever that is. That's between you and the Lord. Whatever it is your need is. It's between you and Him. And when we pray this, as I pray this prayer over you, I want you to go before the Father with this, and I want you to expect Him to do right now in your life, whatever that is. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come together right now with my brothers and sisters, Lord, and I really believe that Your power is upon this prayer. Your power is on this Word that You've given me this morning, God. And I believe in the name of Jesus as we have acted right now by faith and stood up. As we've acted right now on faith and we believe that your word is true. We believe that you are the father of blessing. You are the father of miracles. You are the God of healings. You are the God of provision, Father God. Right now in Jesus' name, I thank you that that miracle working power, that virtue from heaven comes down right now on every situation, God. And I ask you right now for the miracles of God to pour out and to be flooded, to flow right now into these lives, right now. If it's finances, let it be so, God. If it's healing in bodies, let it be so, God. If it's a family member, a relationship, let it be so now in the name of Jesus. Father, we receive our miracle right now in Jesus' name. We look to you, Father. We receive it. We believe it, Father God. And Lord, I thank you that you just show us <laughs> how to walk this out, Lord. I thank you that you are a God of miracles, signs, and wonders. We believe that today. And we allow you full access to our life right now and to this situation. And Lord, we will not play the time game, but Lord, we will just keep speaking the word in expectation for that manifestation to happen in our life. And I agree with my family right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Now, earlier, let me ask this question. Is there, earlier when, when uh, Dad gave that word about the nephew and some, and several people stood up, is, is any of those nephews named John? Yeah? Awesome. Now, before Dad said what he said about there's just something about there's, there's a plan on this person's life, that God has a plan on this person's life, I knew that before Dad said that because he gave me that name, John. And uh, now this doesn't mean it's just for John. It's for some reason, God just is specific sometimes about that. But... Everybody that stood up and is believing God, God's moving in that situation, all right? But that, he gave me that word, John, and there's a reason for it. I know you pray, so you need to find out what that reason is. And just pray into that. But he wanted to single him out for some reason because of his name. And I had no idea. I don't even know who it is. But how old is he? You know? 55. Good, so he's just right at the right age to start doing what God's called him to fully do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I heard the word uh, hip too last night. Anybody having hip problems? Stand up. Hip. Hip. I know we all got hips. Some more proud of our hips. Some more proud of our hips. But we all got hips. All right, just lift your hands up. Masculine right now in Jesus' name. I release healing now. Let it flow. Amen. Hang them loose. Leave. Go. Now, in the name of Jesus, by your stripes, we are healed. Say it. By your stripes, I am healed now. Hey, go. Healing flow. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, anybody have pain when they stood up? Anybody have pain? Not there anymore. 
Pain left right now, instantly. Lift your hand, anybody, anybody. Anybody. Oh, you, Sister Linda, praise God. Anybody else? You still, how are you feeling, Steve? Oh, I would say about 50%. Is it, is it, I all right. stand at all. Were you hurting? Oh, you couldn't even stand. No, hardly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I command full healing. Yes. Fully. I'm tired of watching you walk around like that all the time. I'm serious. Heal! Command the bones to straighten up. Command ligaments to be strong. Command his back right now to be whole in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You thank him for it all day. Just keep thanking him, thank him, walk it out, walk it out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Steve. You he healed in Jesus' name. Pastor Mike, you yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mike, because the doctor a couple years ago said that my fifth and sixth disc, this is that much of the space between the fifth and sixth. There's too much space between yeah, the fifth, yeah. fifth and the sixth. You mentioned disc. that because I didn't say about that. All right. Well, Father, in Jesus' name. I know Ted said he prayed for him before church, so I'm just getting in with that prayer. In Jesus' name. And I command the spine to be healed now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. There's been two situations where I've prayed for people's spines. Very ugly gave me a word one time that there was a knowing on my life to pray for people's spines. There's been two situations where like the past five or six years that right before I went to pray for someone and I put my hand on their back and their back went to it scared me twice, too. All times it happened, I jumped back and I thought, oh my gosh. Uh, well, God did something in their life. Amen. Yeah. Now, I saw this last night. I know, I know this is just words of knowledge I got. I saw this last night. I saw a lady, and I'm looking for that lady today. And I don't, well, I didn't, I didn't know who she was. I don't see the lady that I'm here today that I saw in this vision last night. But maybe this is somebody that you know, because it's, it's going to be very specific. I saw a lady that uh, was wearing a purple, like almost like a, like, um, I'm trying to look to see some, something like Norma has on right now, like a jacket like that, kind of a purple type sweater jacket, nice jacket, something like that. And she has white, short, white hair, and she wears glasses. Like, like uh, you know, uh, prescription glasses. Does anybody know anybody that wears something like that quite a bit, just stand, it stands out in your mind? You might not know anybody like that. It might be for somebody on the internet, but it might just be uh, something for later on down the road. I don't know, but does anybody, can anybody picture somebody that, 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 that you, you recognize like that? I know a lot of women have white hair and wear glasses and wear nice coats. I get that, but it's like something specific. That you know somebody, or you know somebody that does wear a purple coat like that and has white hair and, 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 and wears glasses. I saw that. And this is what I saw with it. Okay, I believe this is attached to it. Skin cancer. I don't know. Anybody in here dealing with skin cancer right now? You are? Okay, stand up. Any, you? No, but my mother-in-law, she has grading, like, there she takes for less purple, she wear a jacket like Norma and okay. All right. she just this, deals with skin cancer. Really? They burn skin cancer off all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, well come on up here, Carol, come on up here. Thank you. I saw this lady in my... Huh? Oh, Royce, you too? I saw. Okay, okay. I saw, let's get, yeah, that's right, okay. I saw this, I saw that lady. I'm just sitting there and I saw this lady. And I knew she was an older lady. I, I knew she wasn't like in her 50s or younger. I knew she was an older lady. I knew that just by looking at her and seeing her. Okay, okay, let me pray. Let me start over here. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now. I command this stuff to dry up in Jesus' name. I'll say it'll come to nothing. Harold, you're going to fulfill the days. Listen, I'm sure the Lord say this. I heard him say this. Your latter days will be greater than your former days. Right. I'm telling you right now, as soon as I touch you. You will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And you'll leave this place on your terms. Yes. You believe that right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I thank you for restoration in every area right now, Father. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for doing a work in Harold's life. Thank you for using it for your glory. 
we say skin cancer it has no rule or reign any longer. It has to go in Jesus' name. Go now. Go now. Jesus' name. Amen. The long life God will satisfy you to show you salvation. In Jesus' name. Better years ahead, greater years ahead. Amen. Yep. Years of service really is what it's going to be for the kingdom. All right. What's your what's your mom? What's your mother in law? Oh, okay, what's your name? Harleen. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, stretch your hands out right now to, the, to them. We pray for Har Harleen. We pray for Harleen right now in the name of Jesus. I command skin cancer and I command any of that stuff to go from her body. I say she will not have any longer in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I release right now. Your, 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 your strength right now under her body in Jesus' name. Where does she live, Mary? Oh, does she? Hold on, I just thought Lord wants to say something about her to me. She cut down the Lord is saying to tell her that she is royalty in His eyes. She's royalty. That she is in His heart and, his, and, and He is in her heart. That, that, and I'm trying to put, okay, Lord, you got to give me... I see it, but it's like I'm trying to, 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 to say it. Um, God is pleased with her life and her love for Him. And you need to share that with her. That the Lord shared that with me this morning to share with her. The Lord is pleased with her. He loves her. And He's going to touch her in this area. And she'll live. Yes, she come on the devil. She'll live the rest of her days with peace. In body and mind. In Jesus' name. We thank you for Harleen, Lord. Thank you for your power, your glory, your presence to come upon her right now. And I thank you that this will be a landmark day in her life that she'll sense the angels of God, the presence of God, and the love of God right now wherever she's at, Father. In Jesus' name. You know, Gary, the Lord's been doing some good things in your family. You know, the past few months, just a lot of prayers and a lot of things God's been saying about your family. And uh, I just really believe revival is going to hit your family. Even even cousins and people that you don't even know, it's just going to kind of spread. God has your family. There's, there's, there's a marking on them. Yeah. For whatever it is, and you're going to see some things happen that you thought, wow, Lord, <laughs> I never knew that. But God's had them all this time. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. We believe you and thank you for that. In Jesus' name, right now, Lord. Thank you for Kathy right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that His voice stands for her. I thank you, Father God, that your healing power is released by faith in Jesus' name in her life. We curse skin cancer. We command it to loose her now in Jesus' name. We don't have to have it. We don't have to live with it. So, Lord, I thank you right now, Lord. As voice goes home and lays His hand on her and prays for her and releases that, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that the healing power of God will flow. Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for peace in Kathy's mind and heart. And I thank you, Lord, for a visitation of your love. Let it flow right now in Kathy's life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Your mom, what's her name? Kathleen. Let's look at Kathleen right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we stand right now in the gap for Kathleen right now, Father. We come before you, Lord, with Kathleen on our hearts and out of our, out of our lips today, Father, her name. In the name of Jesus, we ask you right now, Father, for mercy upon Kathleen right now. I ask you to touch her life right now. Command cancer to loose her and go from her now in Jesus' name. And Lord, let this miracle take place in her life, Father, that she'll see, Father God, your love and your compassion for her right now, Father. Thank you that she has. Oh, thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, that she has. Yes, God, I thank you, Father, that she has oh, an experience with you, God, that she's never had before. Thank you, God. Thank you for touching her and meeting her right now, Father. 
in the name of Jesus. Yes. Command your skin to be whole yes. and to be clear now yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we just give you our lives fully today, Lord. Thank you. We thank you for moving in lives today. We thank you for healing lives. We thank you for your presence. The Bible says in the presence of God there's fullness of joy. We love you, Lord. Why don't you just sense a, just a, a peace of God right here, right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for meeting needs in this place today. For touching hearts. For changing us, Lord, as we yield to you, Holy Spirit. We thank you that we were born for such a time as this, God. Yeah. Thank you. That we will be used by you to usher in this third great awakening that's getting ready to hit the earth, God. And that souls and harvests come in for the great day of the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for all your body and your blood stuff.